Hello students, my name is Alpa Rupala, Assistant Professor from LG Institute of Engineering and Technology, Computer Department. Welcome to the lecture series of Mobile Computing and Wireless Communication. Unit number 3, Subtopic GSM. Topics to be covered in this lecture. First of all, we will understand what is the GSM addresses and identifiers and where there are used in your GSM architecture. Then after we will learn about the GSM services. So first of all, what is the GSM addresses and identifiers? First identifier that is IMSI number. IMSI number. Full form of IMSI number is International Mobile Subscriber Identity. International Mobile Subscriber Identity. Now, whenever you are purchasing a new SIM card, at the back side of your SIM card, you can have one, this kind of one barcode sticker. This barcode sticker is basically having three kind of numbers. First one is SIM number, second one is IMSI number and third one is MSISDN number. Now, what is this IMSI number and MSISDN number? Okay, SIM number is not our concern right now. We are just focusing on this two fundamental that is IMSI number and MSISDN number. The IMSI number is provided by your operator. They are using this number in their database for uniquely identify their customer. Likewise, whenever you are purchasing a new SIM card, so the database entry should be unique for particular user. So, they are creating one unique identifier that is IMSI number to identify you in their database. Okay, in their database. So, ultimately, whenever you are purchasing a new SIM card, uh, between your SIM card activation and purchase, uh, you are having two, time, uh, two hours of time interval in between this. In background, they are doing your uh, data collection as well as that data is being stored in the particular areas MSCs HLR. Okay, in the MSCs HLR to your relevant area, your personal information, your IMSI number, your MSCS, uh, MSISDN number and many more of the data can be stored that you are prepared customer or postpaid customer, all the fundamental will be stored as per your unique identifier number that is IMSI number. All the billing calculation will be also be considered according to your IMSI number. So, if we talk about your operator is giving you an IMSI number, this IMSI number is being stored in your relevant MSCs HLR. Okay. Suppose for an example, here you have given one IMSI number. Likewise, there is a barcode sticker IMSI number. Okay. This IMSI number is a Ahmedabad Airtel operators. Okay. Ahmedabad Airtel operators. Particular structure of IMSI is in a three part. The first part is mobile country code that will be of three decimal places and for Airtel India the country code of India is 404. Then mobile network code that is whatsoever your operator is and that is also unique according to area. That will be of two decimal places and here it is 98 for Ahmedabad Airtel. Then mobile subscriber identification number that will be of maximum 10 digit number and that will be unique to each and every subscriber. So, here it is your IMSI number. Secondly, IMEI number that is International Mobile Station Equipment Identity. Every mobile phone is having one unique identifier number. I am only talking about mobile device. Every mobile device is having a unique identification number and that identification number is provided by the manufacturer of that mobile device. Okay, so ultimately IMEI number is provided by your manufacturer. 
this number is uniquely identify your mobile device but if we talk about IMEI number then it is basically relevant to your mobile station. Mobile station is a combination of mobile device as well as SIM card. So ultimately your mobile device according to your SIM card can have more than one IMEI number. Likewise if you are having dual SIM phone then you can have two IMEI number in your mobile phone. Okay, your mobile device is also having two IMEI number and that both number is being stored in your relevant HLR. Okay, there is a uh, how you can check what is the IMEI number of your mobile device. There is two way. First way is you can type star hash zero six hash. Okay, by this code, a special calling code, you can have your IMEI numbers. Second way, go to your setting of mobile phone, then after about phone, in about phone, status, in status, you can have your IMEI number. So, likewise, IMSI number, it is also having a special kind of structure in which that structure is basically divided into four parts. First part is type approval code, TAC. That will be of six decimal places. Okay, then after final assembly code FAC that will be of six decimal places assigned by your manufacturer. Then after a unique serial number that also will be of six decimal places assigned by your manufacturer. And the one decimal spare place. This place is because we are creating number of a more number of mobile devices every year. So, we need to have one special spare device to uniquely identify each and every mobile devices. Next one is MSISDN number that is Mobile Station Integrated Subscriber Digital Network. Okay, this number is nothing but your unique number or public number which you are using for calling purpose. Okay, whenever anyone is asking for your mobile number, you are giving MSISDN number that is public to everyone and anyone can use that number to call you. So, the structure of MSISDN number is basically, basically divided into three parts. First part is country code that will be of one to three decimal places, right? Our country code is plus 91. Then after national destination code that is NDC that will be of typically 2 to 3 decimal digits it is not compulsory even though. Then after subscriber number and that will be of maximum 10 decimal digit. So this is the main structure of your original calling number that is MSISDN number. This MSISDN number is being stored in your HLR. Okay. Yes, your IMEI number, this number, IMEI number is basically stored in EIR, that is Equipment Identity Register. If your mobile device is activated, then it will store in EIR. Then after next one is MSRN number. Same as your MSISDN number, whenever you are roaming to any another operator's network, then that network provider will give you a special kind of number and that is what your mobile station roaming number. It is having the same structure as your MSISDN number but the first and second parameter of your MSI, uh, MSRN number is according to your roaming network. Okay, it will be according to your roaming network because you are roaming in another operator's network. Then after subscriber number that will be also provided by your current mobile network. So here it is the MSRN number. We will use MSRN number in call routing of GSM. How the call is being routed from your calling to caller. Okay, in that process we will learn about the MSRN number. Then after, if we talk about the LAI, that is Local Area Identity. Uh, we have already learned the GSM architecture hierarchy. In that hierarchy, basically, uh, 
uh, your operator is known as PLMN. Okay, your operator is known as PLMN. Then after, if we talk about each and every CT is being divided into control of MSC. In MSC, further your geographical area is being divided according to LAI, that is local area. Okay, and we need to identify it. So, local area identifier is there. It is also having three parts country code of three decimal digit, mobile network code of two decimal digit and local area code of maximum five decimal digit. Okay, next one is TMSI number and LMSI number. TMSI full form is temporary mobile subscriber identity. LMSI full form is local mobile subscriber identity. Now look, both numbers are given by your roaming, your roaming areas VLR that is visitor location register your VLR matlab, uh, in short whenever you are roaming to any another device on any another network or any another area at that areas VLR will give you a unique identification numbers and that numbers are TMSI number and LMSI number now the TMSI number is not being sent to your original HLR but LMSI number is being sent to your original HLR. This is the difference between TMSI and LMSI and basically LMSI number the VLR is using this number for uniquely identify the customer as an original key. Last one is CI that is cell identifier. Okay, CI cell identifier you already know that local area is further subdivided into cells and that cell is also having unique identifier number. If we want to uniquely identify a particular antenna then we can have the LAI plus CI combination for unique identification purpose. So, this all are the GSM addresses and identifiers. Some of the identifiers we will use in our topic, later topic that is called routing. Next topic is GSM services. There are basically three types of services in GSM, barrier service, tally service and supplementary service. If we talk about the first kind of service, then barrier service. Barrier service is being further divided into two types, transparent service and non-transparent service. Barrier service is nothing but a special kind of service which you are using as a customer, as a subscriber for any type of information sending, data sending. Suppose if we talk about transparent service, then transparent service is basically uh, operate, operating at the physical layer for transmission purpose and it is not doing any error control or flow control mechanism. But next one is non-transparent barrier service they are using layer 2 and layer 3 okay that is data link layer and network layer and they are also doing error correction and flow control mechanism. So according to your requirement you can use any of the barrier service. Next one is tele service first one is telephony you can call you can uh, have the voice transmission according to digital conversion of your analog data to digital data so the digital transmission is being carried out and that will be of 3.1 kilohertz of analog bandwidth next one is emergency number as we have learned earlier in gsm in gsm after fdma division you are having 125 channels but one channel is being separated for SOS and that SOS is what your emergency number. Whenever you are in, a, in any emergency, this number will be activated 24-7. This channel will be activated 24-7 and that will be the highest priority and whatsoever your information is, it will be directly with the high priority being carried out or being sent to your closest emergency center. Next one is SMS, SMS you already know that is a text form messages and that will be of 160 characters. GSM is also accepting 160 characters SMS. Then after next type is enhanced message service EMS. 
that will be the large message that will be of the 760 characters and formatted text can also be applied and small animation pictures but if we talk about large animation and pictures likewise gif and jpg and wbmp files then that files will be sent according to mms that is multimedia message service then after you can also send fax according to your gsm last one is supplementary services supplementary services is not dedicated to every user it is uh, according to customer by customer like any caller tune if you are uh, setting then after uh, any special dnd request this all what uh, according to customer service and that is known as the supplementary service that is not dedicated it is depend on customer requirement so this was all about the gsm addresses and identifiers and gsm services thank you we will meet in our next lecture